Jack, Dave, you two made the cut. Welcome aboard. Now I'm sure you're eager to start your orientation, but first things first, let me know what coin you'd like to be paid in and give me your address. Hello? You first. Oh, I'll take those Susan B. Anthony dollars and my address is uh, 3049 North. Not your home address, your... Did you say Susan B. Anthony dollars? I think he meant like Bitcoin. What's a Bitcoin? Never mind. We'll get you set up with a wallet later. As whoa, for now... Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't carry a wallet. That's like carrying around a sign that says rob me. Shut up. You seem like you know what you're talking about. Go ahead. Hot coin. Address P23QZJ56. Say you've decided you'd like to own some cryptocurrency. Maybe you're looking to squirrel it away as an investment, or maybe you'd like to use it. You've done your research and you understand that you don't download cryptocurrency to your hard drive, but you're unsure of exactly how you can store your new coin. And now that you think about it, how is it that cryptocurrency is considered anonymous, and yet the network knows that it's you who's trying to spend your coin? How do you know your coin is safely secured? And why does your address look like somebody sat on your keyboard? Well, there's a lot to that, so let's start at the beginning. In case you didn't know, cryptocurrency is never stored on your hard drive. Well, technically, if you have a copy of the blockchain, everyone's cryptocurrency is stored on your hard drive, but let's not mince words. Cryptocurrency is stored on a blockchain and only on a blockchain. What you have are the keys to your cryptocurrency. Think of it like a bank account. You put your money in and then withdraw it slowly, transaction by transaction, as you swipe your card. Once you put your money in the bank, you never touch it again, but you have no problem spending it all the same. Okay, so you're looking to get yourself a set of keys then. Assuming you've got plenty of storage space and you're confident that your computer hasn't been compromised, your safest bet is to trust the core wallet put out by the creators of the cryptocurrency. While there's several great wallets put out there by different members of the community, you've got to remember that not everyone has your best interest at heart. It's easy for people to create a fake wallet that sends all your money to them and you won't know until it's too late. By trusting the core wallet put out by the team coordinating the effort to maintain and upgrade your cryptocurrency, you ensure that your wallet software isn't going to scam you. Before I move on, it's important to point out that there's a lot of good wallet software out there besides just the core wallets. As long as you do your research, download from a trusted source, and do your due diligence before you send large amounts to your brand new wallet, you'll be fine. It's all too easy to forget that once you decide to stop trusting banks, you put all your trust in yourself. And if you're going to do that, you need to start acting like the kind of person that you'd trust to handle all your money. You're up to the task, really. It's just a matter of stepping up and doing it. I wish my henchman would take some personal responsibility every now and then. It's always, Boss, I lost my keys, and Boss, I'm telling you, you didn't send me my paycheck last week. Dude, I can look it up on blockchain.info in like five seconds. The whole world knows I sent you that payment. But it's fine. Unruly henchmen are the perfect test subjects for exposure to Hulk waves. I'm confident that Soon I'll figure out why they melt your eyeballs. So you download a wallet you can trust and you boot it up, but you won't see any keys. Those are hidden safely away to make it harder for, say, the guy looking over your shoulder to steal all your money. I funded my first death ray by looking over people's shoulders. Anyway, what you will see is an address that you and others can send funds to that will be collected in the wallet. Your keys correspond to that address, exactly that address, in that address only. I don't like dumbing things down. Being in the business of outsmarting people, I've learned most people can comprehend more than you might give them credit for. With that said, in the interest of covering this topic succinctly, let's assume that your address is where your crypto is sent to. Think of it as the name and the ledger that your funds are attributed to. In truth, your address is actually a part of the locking mechanism that your coin is sealed behind, which is why you don't get to pick what it looks like. Everything originates from the private key in your wallet, which is the way you want it to be. There's no point in anyone sending you money if you can't get to it. This private key is actually just a number between 1 and 2 to the 256 power minus 1. In case you don't feel like busting out your calculator, that's larger than a 1 with 77 zeros behind it, and it's close to the number of atoms that are estimated to exist in the visible universe. All that to say, 
As long as the number that is your private key is random, no one's going to guess what it is. Now, your public key is derived from your private key through the use of standard elliptic curve addition. Now, I'm sure I don't have to explain elliptic curve addition to you guys, but in case you fell asleep in your computational number theory class, addition on the elliptic curve isn't reversible, so you can't deduce a private key from a public key. This means that your public key can be safely published to the blockchain without giving away what your private key is. This is why it's called the public key, because it can be published to the blockchain to unlock your funds. The special signature that's made by your private key interacts with your public key mathematically to demonstrate that you're the owner of the private key that produced the public key without revealing what that private key is. Or to put it another way, your public key is the unique lock that only your private key unlocks. And then we come back around to your address. Your address is derived from your public key similar to how your public key is derived from your private key. Instead of using elliptic curve addition this time, your private key is simply used as the input to the SHA-256 algorithm that we discussed in my last video and then hashed again to make it more compact. That means, yet again, that nobody can figure out your public key from your address. Not that it would matter if they did. Once your public key has been hashed, it's encoded in a format called base58 check, which is really just a different way to write a number. That means that your address, like your private and public keys, is just a number, but written in a funny way. For this reason, it's extremely important that when you copy your address, you don't make any mistakes. Luckily, the Base58 check system is specially made to resist being transcribed incorrectly. That means that if you do make a mistake, the sender's wallet software will usually see that something has gone wrong and stop the money from being lost. Hey, this Bitcoin stuff is pretty cool. So I just tap here for my address and... Whoa! What is it? Where I come from, that's a pretty vulgar word. Let me see. Where are you from? South Dakota. Get back to work, you lazy plark. <laughs> you lazy mother biscuit eating. Did I just have a stroke? Another handy facet of your address is that it can denote what features your wallet does or doesn't support. For instance, segregated witness, or SegWit, is a new feature that's recently been implemented on several different currencies that allows more transactions to fit into blocks and reduces transaction fees, among other things. Unfortunately, if your wallet doesn't support SegWit, you won't even see a SegWit transaction that's sent to you. To avoid this, addresses signal their compatibility with SegWit transactions. There are other features that are planned that will need to signal their compatibility as well. Addresses as a concept are actually extremely versatile. You can create addresses that are only unlocked by a certain number of specific keys or like the ones I give my henchmen access to. Its funds can be spent exclusively by any henchman's key in combination with my own. I have to sign every transaction they try to send, which is a good thing because they've tried to send some heinous stuff. These are called multi-sig addresses and they can be handy in all sorts of different situations. Now that you know the basics of wallets, keys, and addresses, you're ready to learn about how transactions attribute funds to your addresses. But we'll save that for another video. My new henchmen are uniquely spirited, and they're going to take a lot of work. I don't think the lady at the recruitment agency likes me. Maybe she took it the wrong way when I offered to test my shrink ray on her as an alternative to dieting. This is why I stick to villainy. I'm better at it. Alright guys, I'm never going to rise to power if I can't make an impression on people. That's why it's extremely important that you like, comment, subscribe, and tell everyone you know that they have to share this video with 10 friends or their crush will fall in love with, I don't know, the flex tape guy or something. Look, just get the word out. If you do, I'll make you a lieutenant when I conquer the world. Get to it.